Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Look, here is water. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Please stand as you are able and join in singing our gathering song, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
the grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear God's word. The first reading is from Acts chapter 10, beginning at verse 34. 
Peter crosses the immense religious and social boundary that separates Jews from Gentiles in order to proclaim the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection so that God's forgiveness in Jesus' name would reach out to all people. A reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God, God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please read Psalm 118 with me. Would those of you with lower voices join me in reading the odd-numbered verses, and those with higher voices respond with the bold, even-numbered verses? Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the of righteousness. I will enter them in the to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians beginning, or chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. The core of the Christian faith and Paul's preaching is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As the crucified and risen Christ appeared to the earliest of his followers, so we experience the present, presence of the risen one in the preaching of this faith. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, 
and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. The resurrection of Jesus is announced, and the response is one of terror and amazement. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look. There is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. I'd like to invite the children to come forward, and a couple of us would like to talk with you. Good morning, everyone. You know, we're, uh, this is a special day today, this being Easter, and we have, um, we have Mr. Eric Mays here with us, and he wants to talk with you all already. Yeah, so, pa so Pastor, asked me to come up here and ask you about some of your favorite or most meaningful stories in the Bible. So there's a variety of stories, right? So there's a bunch of them. So there's the story of when Jesus is born, the story when the kings come to visit the newborn, you know, come to visit Jesus, when the angels visit Mary, 
there's stories through Jesus' life where he turns a basket of bread into many loaves of bread to feed thousands of people, or he turns a basket of fish into many thousands of fish to feed thousands of people. And then we have the story here during Easter. A lot of people enjoy and think meaningful when Jesus rides in to Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, or a lot of people think that their favorite story or the most meaningful story is like when Jesus does communion with his disciples at the Last Supper on Maundy Thursday. Or some people think the most meaningful is when Jesus dies on the cross. So, but a lot of people's favorite story is the Easter story where Jesus is in the tomb and then Mary Magdalene and a few ladies come to visit him, come to, come to put spices at the tomb. And that's what Pastor was just reading. So I'm curious, of all the stories that we know about Jesus over the years that we learn, where like Lazarus was dead and he raised Lazarus from the dead, one of the stories, or when Jesus, the fishermen are out on the lake, they're out in the sea and they're fishing and it's a storm and they're very afraid and Jesus walks out there on the water and helps them and assures them that they'll be safe. So. Do you have a favorite story? Something that's maybe the most meaningful to you? The Easter story. How about you, Clara? You don't know. How about you? The Easter story? Easter story. It's very interesting. Do you know when the Easter, do you know what your favorite story is? No. Easter story, maybe? That's all right. So my favorite story is a little teeny bit of the Easter story. And last night at the Easter Vigil service, they pastor read it. He didn't read it today, but that's all right. Okay, and my favorite part of the Easter story is when Mary is coming to the tomb and they discover that Jesus is not there. And they're very afraid, like, did somebody take Jesus' body? And then she sees him. And she doesn't know it's Jesus. She doesn't know it's him. And then as soon as he speaks to her, he says, Mary. And she realizes it's him. And she's filled with joy. And what does he tell her? Do you remember what he tells her? He tells her, go tell the disciples, go tell my friends that I am alive, that I have risen from the dead. But she's so surprised that when he comes before her, she has no idea who he is. She can't quite tell who it is until he speaks her name. It's just kind of bizarre that that little piece, I don't exactly know why, but that little piece of the Easter story, for whatever reason, is one of my most favorite East part, part of all of this teachings of Jesus over the years. I don't know why it is. I've always enjoyed that for us older folks, for the movie series that was Jesus of Nazareth when we were kids in the late 70s. There's that scene there at the very end where the ladies, where the Marys go to the tomb. They don't know where he is, and then he's in the garden. And they don't realize it's him until later. So I know it's just a very interesting thing. Yeah. And I wanted to share that. And I appreciate you letting cool. me share that, Pastor. Thanks for sharing that. And All thanks right. for asking others about their favorite stories of the Bible and what helps inspire their faith as well. Thanks I'll, for coming up and talking with us. I'll let you sit in the chair now. Oh, cool. <laughs> I get to talk now, too. That's pretty cool. You know, I, um, I have a, a box. Has anyone seen one of these before? Have you, have you seen one? Th this, um, this is a box that came from um, Amazon. Has anybody seen an Amazon box before? You have? You've already seen one of these? You know what this is? Oh. Well, this isn't much of a surprise then. I guess I flubbed this one up. You know, the thing is, um, I, I, I got this package, and um, of course it came in a box, an Amazon box, and I opened the Amazon box up, as you do, and I took out the, the things that I had ordered. Have, have you all had that before? Have you all done that? 
you've done that. Okay, so that's not new. Well, you know, after you take things out of the Amazon box that you get, since you all know this, um, what, what are you left with? You're left with your stuff. You got your stuff, but the other thing you're left with is an empty box. Right, left with an empty box. And that kind of reminds me of the story that we have today about the Easter Sunday. And we heard today that three women went there and they went to bring spices and ointments to put on Jesus' dead body. But they found when they got there that the tomb was already opened like, like a box. And Jesus wasn't there. It was kind of like having an empty package box. But the thing was, that was good news. They didn't quite understand it yet, but it turns out that was good news. Because the empty tomb meant that Jesus was no longer dead. Even though he had died, he came back to life. He rose again. And you know, that is a little bit like having an empty box that you got a package in. And sometimes empty boxes, even when you've taken the packages out, contain great and wonderful things. And Maybe even this one might, too. <laughs> you know, God shows up to us in many ways. And God comes back to life, even in times of sadness and despair. God keeps showing up in our lives and in your lives. Can we all pray together? Can we hold hands? Let's pray. Holy God, thank you for your love. Thank you for coming to us in good times and bad. And dear God, thank you for giving us new life that we have seen in you because of your rising from the dead. Dear God, help us to remember the blessings of your love and your life for new beginnings in our lives too. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you for coming up here this morning. If you all would like to take a butterfly with you, you may. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is risen indeed. In Holy Week, all of the most important and core elements of our Christian faith are pulled together and compacted into just seven days. This 
has been the week of Jesus traveling willingly to Jerusalem, where he knew that he would be taken in by the Jewish leaders and Roman officials too. He knew that he would be tried and convicted for being just what he was, the Son of God, the Messiah, sent from God to be the true and full witness of God's message to the world. On Monday, Thursday of Holy Week, Jesus celebrated the Passover with his disciples. Jesus knew that it would be his last supper with his disciples, but only with hindsight would his disciples know that it would be the Last Supper, where Jesus would institute the Eucharist, where Jesus comes to us in body and blood that would be crucified the following day. On Friday, Jesus would become the victim of and even made part of terrorism that the Romans were acting out upon Jews and all troublemakers in their empire. He was nailed to a device that would kill him slowly and painfully over many hours for everyone to see what sort of death a criminal of the empire would suffer and thereby scare the population into submission. The problem was even colluding together, the Jewish religious leaders and Roman governors couldn't keep this rebel rouser down. They couldn't keep him from traveling town to town, telling stories, preaching God's character, healing the sick and feeding the hungry, even after his followers cried as they fled from the scene where Jesus was killed. It was not over. Even though the apostles thought Jesus had turned out to be nothing but a crazy preacher with a savior complex, it was not over. Bishop Dr. Munib A. Yunan of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Jordan and the Holy Land notes, if you visit the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, also known as the Church of the Resurrection, you can see very well what a concern this must have been for the women. In the Coptic and Syrian Orthodox areas, you can see tombs which are similar to ones used in Jesus' time. These tombs were meant for two or three persons, and the openings would have required a very large stone to close the entrance. This was exactly the worry of Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, as they approached the tomb of Jesus. The stone is too large, and we are just a few. The stone is stamped by a military order, and we have no authority. Who will roll away the stone for us? We are horrified by news reports of racism, clashes with police, extremism, terror, and violence. Who will roll away these stones? In this way, we can certainly identify with the women of that first Easter morning. We see people using the name of God to kill God people. We see shocking images which shake our bodies and silence us. Like the women who left the tomb and said nothing to anyone, we are at a loss for words. In the face of incredible obstacles and things we do not understand, we feel powerless and afraid. Who will roll away the stone for us? They did not bring an expert or a strong man or an army to roll away the stone. They came to anoint the one they loved, but when they arrived, they were shocked and surprised. 
for the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. The good news is that the living God has already rolled back the stone, blocking our hearts and lives. The stone of the tomb seen today as the forces of extremism, terror, and injustice has already been moved aside by the power of the resurrection. These forces hold no power over us. The power of the risen Christ has cleared every obstacle lying between us and abundant life. The power of the risen Christ has rolled away every stone standing between us and the risen Lord. Now is a time to believe in the power of resurrection, which is the power of embracing the other over denying the other. Christ risen is the power of goodness over evil, love over hate, light over darkness, and life over death. Now is the time to be living witnesses to resurrection. One such witness is Pope Tawadros II of the Coptic Orthodox Church. After the killing of 21 Coptic Christians at the hands of terrorists in Libya, he proclaimed that now is not the time for revenge, saying, we condemn these evil acts, but we forgive the perpetrators as we have been forgiven. He is a living witness to the power of resurrection over the power of death. Because the stone was already rolled back on that resurrection morning, we hold steadfast in the hope that God is at work today, breaking down barriers, pushing hatred aside, and opening the way for relationships and whole communities of love to be built. Because the stone was rolled away, we hope and believe in the power of Christian communities like this one to build partnerships and deep faith that will overcome to minister and have an amazing impact upon people of all ages in towns just like Ypsilanti. Because the stone was rolled away, we have great hope in doing God's work together in this place. We reach out. We place God's word in the hands of those who join us. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join in singing our hymn of the day, Lift High the Cross.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church. Where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace, hear our prayer. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. We pray today especially for Chuck, Dan, Judy, Jalen, Don, Barb, Coralie, Lynn, Joe, and the friends and family of Jake. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace, hear our prayer. For what else does this congregation pray? Prayers may be said aloud or silently in your hearts or typed into the live chat box. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another.
risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit, with your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come 
and eat at God's table. As you come forward, you are invited to walk up the aisle, starting with this side of the congregation. There will be bread that I will distribute, and Monica will share wine or juice, which will be found in small individual cups. Come to the banquet, for all are welcome at Jesus' table. If you need to remain seated, that is just fine. We will come to you after we distribute from here. in the morning when the world was begun and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun and I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth at Bethlehem I had my birth dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance said he and I'll lead you all wherever you may be and i'll lead you all in the dance said he 
I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they wouldn't dance and they wouldn't follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John. They came with me and the dance went on. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped and they stripped and they hung me high and left me there on a cross to die. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on a Friday when the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone, but I am the dance and I still go on. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. They cut me down and I leapt up high. I am the life that'll never, never die. I'll live in you and you'll live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be. And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced in the morning when the world was begun, and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun, and I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth. At Bethlehem I had my birth. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they wouldn't dance and they wouldn't follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John. They came with me and the dance went on. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped and they stripped and they hung me high and left me there on a cross to die. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on a Friday when the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone. But I am the dance and I still go on. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be and I'll lead you 
all in the dance, said he. They cut me down and I leapt up high. I am the life that'll never, never die. I'll live in you and you'll live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be. And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be. And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he.
how good it is to commune together. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. We just have a couple of quick announcements to lift up. First of all, I echo pastor's sentiments, how good it is that we are all here to worship together. So nice to see all you smiling faces. Uh, we would invite anyone who is here for their first time or maybe your first time in a while, please do sign the guest book that's in the back on the table in the narthex. Um, we just would love to know who you are and have some contact information. Uh, as you can see, we have an altar adorned with beautiful lilies. And if you have purchased a lily, please feel free to take it home after our worship service. Our Thursday afternoon Bible study classes return this week after a hi hiatus of a couple of weeks for Holy Week. I look forward to seeing you all on Thursday at 1230 in the lounge. Just and we have a coffee hour right after the service, and I hear tell there's going to be some fantastic food there, so please join us. And a special thanks to our musicians who joined us today for this live music. Thank you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join in singing our sending song, Make Songs of Joy. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 